Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the special presentation of the Owlet Tournament preseason. I am your caster, Hoda Hori, and today we've got two great teams for you. It is Otter Oxide and Storybook Villains joining me as my co-commentator and color caster. It is going to be Pulse. How are you doing today, Pulse? You know, I'm alive, so that's about all I can ask for. <laughs> but like Odo said, it, we have a good Taco Tuesday planned for everyone with uh, the Otter Oxide and Storybook Villain matchup. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be great. Otter Oxide, for those who aren't in the know, but for those who don't, are the Miners Champions from Season 2. So Otter, Otter Oxide now have decided to matriculate up the Overwatch ladder, per se, and now are going to be in the Majors Division. They're going to be playing up with the big boys, and their opponents today is going to be Storybook Villains, filled with uh, Owl, uh, Owlet, excuse me, um, experienced players such as uh, Bowl of Bowls, Lit Cat, and uh, Brutal One who have played here in the league. So it, it seems here that uh, they're going to be joined with uh, Inoloco, Kusagari, and Sharpshot to win who has also played, but if I remember right, Sharpshot was also in the Miners Division last uh, last season. Yeah, and I believe Brutal One was too. I, I We don't have the team cards made for everyone, but there are definitely some names that we see here returning, like those four Hoda pointed out. Mm -hmm. Brutal One, I remember a very good widow in the playoffs, mm -hmm. and Sharpshot, I believe, was the TPS partner at the time, so... Yeah, Otter Oxide has a bit of a changeup in their roster. A lot of veterans, though, with a with Siaguli, Yellow Cello, who will be new, Jumpy Wizard, and Pink Central. Amerikuyu uh, will be uh, leading the line here. So therefore, uh, he's the he's our host. So please thank him for hosting the lobby. But Otter Oxide here going going through the motions and making sure they're going to be ready here uh, for the majors division. You saw them yesterday, I think, on the main channel. So you'll see more of them here tonight. So let's just take a look at the maps that we are going to be playing right now. It'll be Elios, Hanamura, K King's Row, and Havana. And if we do go into a fifth map, it will be Lee Jong Tower. Uh, both teams here are already in the lobby, so it looks like they're eager and ready to go. What do you think of the map pool here, Pulse? It's an interesting map pool because it's one of those ones that there, there are maps that tend to favor certain compositions. Like when you think of Nubani, you think dive. That was one of the ones where like dive very became popular. Mm -hmm. But with this one, it's very flat between Kings Row, Hanamura, Havana. There's not a whole lot of high ground that you need to control. And especially with no, double shield right. being pretty prominent now, all of these are ones that you'd probably see a Symmetra on, especially in higher ranked games or even in pro play because the teleporter helps you get back from spawn faster, but it's not a great vertical nice. mobility. And Symmetra is one of those heroes that doesn't suffer or suffers a little bit when you have to bring in mobility to high grounds for like free mobility especially mm -hmm. things like jump where it's just a single cooldown instead of being a stationary teleporter and since you don't really see that here like symmetra is going to be very powerful uh on ilios you always see things like this was one of the maps that torb was really first played on in al or like ruins in particular which is the first subset map that we're going to be on yep. widow's always very strong so there's a chance to see that and then just meta picks in general as of late have been shield heroes specifically sigma has been very popular orissa and then with the orissa sometimes either hog or diva and the main tank's sort of been forced into that orissa jail right now so mm -hmm. these are maps that you're very likely not going to see anything other than orissa and then an off tank with yeah, 15 seconds here left to go, so we're going to bring up the overlay here for the game. So it is going to be in blue. It will be Otter Oxide uh, and Storybook Villains. There we go. Looks like it was a little late loading into the channel. Just to remind you, on the main channel right now, in progress, it is Burn and MSXL, the Season 1 Owlet Champions, who are coming back here to Owlet. So if you are interested, the Owlet Tournament channel is also live. We are the alternate stream, and here we go. 18 seconds left to go to the point, and we're going to be following Storybook Villains here on to the point. They're going to try to see if they can come out through the right side following America. Uh, looks like the Brutal One, though, gets immediately taken out. Great job there by Yellow Cello as he eliminates one of the players already here from the villains as now it looks like Otter Oxide is, has the high ground and are going to be trying to see if they can just rain down death on them. Maywell comes up but initial point here is going to be taken by Storybook Villains. See a Ghoulie goes down and that will even up the fight here with uh, members of Otter Oxide now going to be down one as their reinforcements from Storybook Villains are going to be coming in. Otter Oxide is in a really bad spot here Pulse as Yellow Cello is going to have to force himself out. That's going to make sure that he's going to get killed by the 
five people sitting on the point, and it looks like the Oxide, the Otters here, are going to have to go back to spawn. Yeah, despite that really early pick, they managed to burst down Brutal One almost instantly, mm -hmm. but they failed to really touch point, and they lost it right away. So, uh, unfortunately, they're going to start falling behind in point progress, even though they should have won that first fight pretty cleanly. Yeah, Jumpy Wizard had a lot of healing in that. He's already at 90% to his ult here. He's far and away, way up on uh, on the ult meter with regards to everybody else. So good good healing there from Otter Oxide. So it wasn't really that that was causing him here. They're going on the high ground again as they approach the main point. As it looks like here, uh, the members of Storybook Villains are just content to just basically sit there. Oh, and it looks like they're trying a, a little grab ball... Uh, uh, boulder there, try combination as it uh, looks like Jumpy Wizard takes down the Immortality Field that's in the corner. Here comes already an ult here coming in from the Sigma on the side of Storybook Villains. They will slam him down, but they've got the healing to save him up. But it looks like just the positioning is just terrible here for Otter Oxide. But what an ult here coming out as Ping Central will take down two with his ult. A freeze coming in here to see if they can buy some time for reinforcements to come in. It will take three, but it looks like all the kills here coming in on the side of Otter Oxide. They're going to be able to take this point. Now it's just going to be a matter of delay, but it looks like it will be about 80 86 percent uh all the way to storybook villains yeah and that was a slog fest of a fight too jumpy wizard started it with a window just kind of missed it put it on point behind their team but already has another one so that's not even gonna be a huge loss for them and of course with may in the meta blizzard's gonna be the most powerful ultimate and they w and sharp shot wasted theirs last round so now amara Kuyu has a blizzard at whim to throw down whenever they want to take this next fight yeah, and no, Pink Central are already wasting this supercharger. Like this is just free percentage for them right now. Yeah, they're just basically trying to force them back and basically buy extra fights here, Pulse. So it looks like Brutal One is going. They're going to be hiding and waiting for that Bongo to go down. It might buy them a couple extra seconds, but that Bongo is so powerful. Maybe they might want to save that. Oh, and there's the Grav Dragon Strike coming through, forcing out a bunch of cooldowns from the def from the attacking team right now. Mm -hmm. So it looks like here they're actually going to put the freeze right onto the choke point here. Jumpy Wizard takes down Inoloco and there was already a kill on the Brutal one earlier. So they're going to force them back. This hyper aggression coming in from Otter Oxide doing what they need to do as Siaguli gets two of his own here. Force them back to spawn. They've already closed the gap here. 20% uh, 27% left remaining. This, uh, this aggression is what we saw in the Miners division. They're trying to emulate it here in the Majors. Mm -hmm. And Ping is actually a ringer this map from what we heard so doing very well for filling in on short notice for Otter Oxide right now They have a window that they can use to control this space and force them back if they want But if they can take down this bongo then they have an easy fight with Yeah, actually it takes down the bongo here, but they lose uh, Amerikuyu in the process so that could be problematic So it looks like here frozen and down goes ping central so therefore the, it's going to be the members of storybook villains trying to just clean up here but they uh, the but the way that the percentages have gone otter oxide has bought themselves a fight but it's going to be a really really close one as 87 percent they're going to need to rush back onto the point yeah there's a decent chance they won't even be able to make it back especially without having a lucio or anything in in the way way of speed boost here but with america you've blowing ultimate or blowing ice block before you can touch point Yellow is just barely able to touch his Hammond. Yeah, as, as he rushed in, and he takes out Brutal One too, so good bonus there. And it looks like here an ult coming out from Inoloco will try to see if he can force everybody off the point here. But instead, it's going to be dueling uh, Sigma ults on both sides. It looks like the better of this fight is going to be the Otter Ox, uh, the Otters. They're going to be coming out, take three kills down, as it looks like Storybook Villains are just going to get overwhelmed on the point. The point is going to be turned. Brutal One is back here on the Doomfist, but there's not very much that he can do. 98, 99, there is nobody left from the villains, as it looks like Otter Oxide will take the first map here on Ruins. Yeah, and that was a very interesting map overall because it is preseason teams are practicing with the new meta but it was very kind of sloppy from both teams as far as how they're approaching how they're resetting in fights and even how ultimates were used you saw a bunch of them where it's just like you throw down alt and it's like oh well that just missed everyone or things like that mm -hmm. but otter oxide coming out on top just sort of on on the back of that final pick by yellow chill was sneaky in and killing brutal one yeah that was very, very sneaky there. So it looks like here, eight seconds to go. So we threw it a little bit of B-roll. There was a, 
And there was, it looks like the sound was coming in a little low here. So just wanting to adjust. This is preseason, so I am just basically working out the kinks here. As a producer, we're going to be following the villains again here as they engage onto the point. Not real many changes here, as it looks like the real only difference is, is that Kusugare will be running the Lucio, where Jumpy Wizard has been excellent on that Baptiste. And now it looks like they've already set up here right on the point as an accretion goes down right away as they're trying to force each other back. Little ground ball coming in. They're trying to see whether or not they can pull them out of position in this shield fight. So looks like, oh, a Farah from America, Kuyu, uh, will be raining rockets here onto the side uh, of Storybook Villains as the Villains try to gain just a little bit of space, but brutal one here negates Amerikuyu, who was taken out in the air, and now it is just a standoff here. Uh, Accretion will come back again. Uh-oh! It looks like Inoloko actually got grabbed right into the hole, and with Seguli taking down Kusagari, here is the advantage here for Otter Oxide. It looks like Bowl of Bowls here being very stubborn. He's going to get nano boosted, so therefore they're going to try to see if they can keep him on the point, but it looks like Otter Oxide is actually going to get early percentage here, so now it's a matter of just cleaning up the point here, Pulse. Mm -hmm. And we see a reset coming through from Storybook Villains, but it wasn't a full reset, and kind of like Bulls of Bulls in a bad position gets pulled into the hole as they're trying to be aggressive. Yeah, as it looks like the boop from Kusogari will get to, but Seguli is being a real hero here as he took down two himself. Cello's got to get back on the point, but he's 2v1. And he's going to get taken out, but nobody here on the point. As it looks like Jumpy Wizard now on the Baptiste, trying his best to stay alive and basically stall. It's going to be a matter of who gets reinforcements at first, but it's not going to matter, I think, now, as it looks like Otter Oxide here will give up the point at 31%. Kusogari coming in huge on that Lucio boop, getting two into basically win the fight mm. and that actually wants me brings me up to talk about something with this support line because we see the baptiste coming out on jumpy wizard which works a lot better with bunker compositions it's a lot of close range healing you've seen how quickly you've gotten those windows up all the time but this is the one map where i'd say you can run lucio instead of it it's just because of that well yeah, High Noon now coming out here from Brutal One, seeing if he can basically just force him into a terrible position. As it looks like here, Kusugari will get Siogulli again. Siogulli has been huge, as he's been the one providing a lot of the DPS here for uh, Otter Oxide, but it looks like the fight will just be a standoff here, as it's going to be forced back. And they're really just to concede, as Storybook Villains here are really just going to hold that corner and make sure that Otter Oxide does not get a clean fight. Yeah, and they haven't really used anything on the side of Storybook Villains. They still have the Lucio alt, which is basically going to be their main sustain if any single fight comes down or if they decide to turn into a brawl. And they have forced Americuyu over onto that May now, so as long as they can get a wall off, that's that's the Otter Oxide win condition right now. Yeah, Jumpy Wizard getting an early kill here on a brutal one is going to be useful, but a freeze comes out, but a great immortality field. Not enough to save Sh uh, Shinky, but unfortunately uh, for... Uh, it looks like the storybook villains is there. They're on the wrong end of the bullets right now. As it looks like Otter Oxide will take this point back, giving it up here at 74%. Good hold there by the villains. As now it is going to be Otter Oxide's turn to sort of push in on them, and we see them being very aggressive. They're not going to be uh, sort of holding up in any of the choke areas. They're actually going to take as much space as they can, and Yellow Cello and team here are just going to try to push back into that area. But they go right into a uh, looks like an ult here from Inoloco. Siaguli, though, is able to take down the Brutal One into the back, but Inoloco here is going to be nano boosted as a freeze comes out. That's going to capture both tanks here into the back as it looks like here Shinki and Siaguli will do a lot of the work there in the back. And back go the members of Storybook Villains. They're going to be going back to spawn here as that, uh, that percentage gap is now being closed. It is being closed, but this is something we saw from them last night, or two nights ago, I believe, mm -hmm. and also on the previous map where they're over-investing these alts a little bit. Ameri Q threw in that blizzard, and it was a big blizzard, but it was a fight that was already won, and they're really going to want that back now, especially since they have no counterplay to anything coming out from the side of Storybook Villains. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be very judicious at this level with your alts and make sure that you get absolute value from them. Bongo now goes down here for the members of the villains as they're going to try to see if they can break any of the shields that come up. Immortality Field trying to stall them down as it looks like the members here of Otter Oxide are just going to give up a little bit, go around the corner and wait out the Bongo. Actually, great strategy there. Forces them off the point. They've got to be careful. Uh, Story of the Villains here has to stay on the point here. We're at 99% and they've got to take it back. First kill might take this point here as another shield will come up while we'll split the team. Dragon comes through from Siaguli as it goes right over Brutal One who is high nooning and he gets taken out. But Kusogari again coming up huge as he takes down Nero Cello 
with a uh, with an alt here coming from Pink Central, and he got three. That's gonna end it, I think. And there is your first victory of the day. Otter Oxide will take Ilios two to zero. And it was a very close two to zero too. That was one of the ones where both matches really finished within a twenty point or twenty percentage differential on King's Row maps. So. It's it's definitely not a one-sided match, but it does look pretty messy so far. And I really can't blame them because it is like preseason still. Everything along with preseason, getting used to your new teammates, getting used to the new majors. But I, I can very confidently say that taking these matches into VOD review, one of the big things that both teams' coaches will want to look at is alt usage and how they're using bongos and how they're how they're using alt in fights because that's the one thing that i sort of noticed going on throughout that first map absolutely so it looks like here um uh instead of hanamura we're actually going to be going into volskaya and in nope it looks like sorry it looks like uh, there you got was i did get debated i actually did have the graphics up correctly uh for those who are interested in understanding why there is a question mark under map four uh map four is actually havana and we are uh using the scoreboard tool here provided by broadcast gg uh for those who don't know who broadcast gg are they are the organization uh along with elo hell that run contenders on the other side for uh of for blizzard uh they do north american south american chinese korean contenders a lot of the casting will come from Broadcast GG and Elo Hell, and this is their actual tool where they're updating everything here. I'm just fiddling around with it, making sure I have all of the, the knowledge that I can with regards to this all. But uh, first win going to Otter Oxide. We're going to go into Hanamura here, and it looks like everybody's in a bit of a rush. So uh, just a little bit of downtime. No substitutions from either side here, from Storybook or Otter Oxide. There is a substitution. It oh, looks there like is. they're from Otter Oxide, they're putting in their standard roster player, Viper, for Ping Central. Ah, there we go. Last minute substitution. I did not see it. Yeah, Messing around with point. the scoreboard tool, uh, I was unable to see what... That's why I'm here, Hodo. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's Make sure he's you have my, all your senses. Yeah, he's my left hand, folks. Like, if it doesn't go down right, it's because Pulse didn't get it right. <laughs> so If it, if it I, doesn't go down right, it's because I'm your left hand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and I am right-handed. But Hanamura is going to be the next map here uh, between the two teams. And this is one of those maps, you either love it or you hate it. So it to me, I, I, I've always loved love this map. I love this map. This was the map I okay. used in Scrub Cup 2 uh, as a fallback okay. map uh, for my team that went to the finals because everybody hated this map. Hanamura <laughs> is a very pretty map. I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. It is... Point B is a very technically challenging point just because of how strongly it favors the defenders yes but i don't know I, there's a part of me that wants to like hanamura and i do like hanamura but the reason the only thing that makes me that keeps me from loving hanamura is that so many people hate hanamura and don't know how to play it. <laughs> and it just kind of rubs off on you after a while you know well the thing about it is is that based on these bunker comps it's actually it's gotten a lot harder to actually actually break through the choke in part a i've actually seen more full holds in professional play than i've ever seen before just because of the way that hanamura is played by a lot of teams so oh if, for, certainly yeah so 10 especially seconds with here, the let's go. double shields or the bunker comps or i've always been a huge fan of using may even on attack on hanamura just because it gives you a free entrance into this this courtyard exactly um, and right now, Maze Meta, so both these teams have one out on the field already. I can't say that I'm very surprised. You can use it as a free entrance, flank all the way around, get into the position you want to be as attackers, or as defense, you can just use a May wall to screw up someone's day. So it looks like they're going to go teleporting strategy, as they're just going to teleport onto the point and make the members of Otter Oxide turn around, as it looks like Inoloco here is going to be taking the front line, making sure that he's going to get everyone. Brutal One already getting two. That microwave coming out from Brutal One is huge! Just melting everyone. But there's nothing Yellow Cello can do. He's fortifying right now, but he's gonna get he's gonna get nailed down as it looks like here. They've gotta die quick. They don't wanna get steamrolled as it looks like Siaguli, they're able to take down Inoloco, but they're gonna have to wait for him, so but very, very quick take. As I say that about people actually getting held in point A, it looks like they're gonna just bum rush here and they're just gonna teleport over to the right on the left side here, excuse me. And uh it, they're just gonna be trying to see if they can go down um the throats here of Otter Oxide. Yeah, it looks like Otter Oxide was a little unprepared, but you have to expect a Symmetra on this map now. Yeah. 
hits, and immediately the symmetrical wall comes up. We'll split the teams up as it looks like Honor Oxide was getting ready for a high point defense, but them coming on the left with the symmetrical will allow them to teleport over as Brutal One again has just been wrecking people. It looks like Bowl of Bulls and Inoloco getting in on the fun, and it is going to be a quick one, folks. Nobody's going to be able to come back out. Storybook villains, 533 here on Hanamura. Absolutely fantastic. That is about as fast as you can get on this map. I think they lost like one person and they had to wait or wait for a change to come through. But yeah, Symmetra Teleporter is good on that. <laughs> it, it is conveniently the right distance for Teleporter to make it from choke to point. So you can just do that. And it really throws teams for a loop. And yeah. one of the things that honestly has changed throughout Hanamura real for throughout the history of Overwatch is where you hold. Because it started before like Symmetra Teleporters or Maywalls. You'd hold at choke. Or, like, over the course of dive, you'd hold a bit further in, like, courtyard. But as soon as you saw teams, like, in Overwatch League, when Bunker, or even in Contenders, when Bunker started popping up and, like, Sim started popping up even before her rework, mm -hmm. you would have teams starting to hold that high ground by, like, high ground on the, the Pagoda side. I'm not sure if it's the culturally right word, but what I call the Pagoda side with that has a mega health pack that's high ground sort of to the left of the choke entrance. Teams do that, or they'd bunker up on point, or bunker up to uh, the the alleyway on the attacker's right side of point. And you hold one of those positions. That way, if people try and get to point, you're in a position to attack them on point. Or if you're playing dive, you want your supports back there. That way, if someone dives you, they have to use their cooldowns to burn that distance between you. They can't just walk up. So you saw very commonly like Ana's Zen's just sitting by the mini health pack on the attacker's right side of point. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you really have to go back and revisit when Bunker's around. Because if people do opt for a Symmetra teleporter strat and you're holding by the door, it completely just throws your team for a loop and makes it so that you entirely have to turn around and attack through the sand pit, which is basically a death sentence on Hanamura. Yeah, so you, you don't can't do that. You have to, yeah, you have to like think about it ahead of time and be like, oh, right, they can do this now because I'm not used to this after playing this game for three plus years and it's something I have to think about now. And it, <laughs> this map has probably been changed the most because of the Symmetra reworks. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, as you saw, like there are multiple ways to do it. Teleporting into different distances and locations into Hanamura is going to be a little different. As it looks like, um, we're just having a couple of pauses come through, so we wanted to push up the uh, difficulty screen just to make sure that nobody is stream sniping, just in case any members of the story the villains or Otter Oxide are, are watching the stream. Just making sure. We are running a uh, two-minute delay here, but just wanted to make sure for that. We're going to be back now, as it looks like the members here of the Storybook Villains are going to be on the defense now as they're setting up right here on the choke bullet bowls here we'll set up here on the choke along with brutal one who is going to act almost as a third tank pretty much in a loco here will be right behind bullet bowls so they're going to try and bunker in here shields and walls are going to be the order of the day and siaguli is going to be trying to see if he can and his symmetra can uh teleport in and bypass all of these shields they see the Symmetra coming out, and they instantly reset the point, which is something that Otter Oxide probably should have opted to do in their attack. So, Sharp Shot gets that early pick on Shinky, and yeah. it's going to cause a reset to happen. So, both teams are opting for this Hanzo, which is, I'm going to honestly say, I think is hurting Otter Oxide right now, because they don't have a wall to pair with this Symmetra. Generally, when you run a Symmetra shield ranking cop, mm -hmm. the May wall just to add to your team's overall tankiness, the ice block is a save. Sharp shot taking another person down at long range on that, yeah. that Hanzo. But this is part of the reason why you want a Maywall, because it mitigates so much damage coming through. They have to realize that they need to push left side, or else they're going to have to keep eating these Hanzo shots to the face. So this is where you sort of reset and go the other way. Yeah, but that's exactly just right. in general, May is so good on these close range points, especially on 2CP with Blizzard, everything else. But they are trying to take this Hanzo fight still. Well, they you they listened to your advice here, so it looks like they actually shifted over to the left here as a little bit of a, a lull in the storm as they're going to be looking for a teleport location. So they are going to go to the right side here and just bypass 
uh, bypass the uh, the choke and will go up onto the high ground. So they're going to try to see if they can rain death here onto the members here of uh, the Storybook Villains who are going to be just bunkering in onto the point as uh, shots will going in. Accretion coming in from Viper, not going to be able to see if they can get anything. Too many shields there. So now they're up on the high ground, Pulse. What do they want to do here as, uh, as they're trying to just come in onto the point? Well, they didn't want to get split like they just got with the Symmetra and Morris, but they have some abilities to keep them alive, but they're going to have to win off this first wave of aggression and make their way onto point slowly if they want to do anything here. Yeah, they're, they're going to need a kill, but there are just too many walls and shields for them that they're going to be able to come through this cleanly. Brutal one actually will take down Siaguli, so, uh, but it will be a uh, ult here from the Moira trying to see if they can sort of push through. They're not just trying to destroy any of the main walls here. They should actually see if they can actually get them down, but th with the shields coming back up, it's very, very hard for them to come through. Yellow Cello and Jumpy Wizard go down and that's going to be that for that push 147 here on the clock they have spent close to two minutes and 15 seconds already trying to get through and no joy here for Otter oxide yeah this is definitely a pretty bad case of staggers i wouldn't say it's an unwinnable map yet because as long as they take point b mm -hmm. even if it's like an overtime it's very possible to hold because they just got surprised on their first round so as long as they don't fall for it again and the same thing happens, they can still draw it, but it's definitely looking hard to win at this point for them. So Goalie has a wall, which is probably the best thing they have, and they finally opted to swap for that man. Yeah, and it looks like they're just gonna teleport right onto the point here. And they put the ice wall up, and now it's not, I can't even actually see anything as it looks like Siaguli will now try to push in, but gets immediately taken down here by Sharpshot as, as they're trying to get in, but they're not getting any of the kills, Pulse. Bongo went down here for the side of the Storybook Villains, and they just forced them back. Mm -hmm. They needed to do a drive push or something to force out alts, because now with 40 seconds left, mm -hmm. by the time everyone respawns, they're not really going to have an alt besides Viper's grab. grab Gravitic Flux. I'm still getting used to saying that. Which is a very flux. strong alt. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so hard to say. It's a very strong alt, but it won't kill anyone by itself. You need to follow it up with something. And right now they've been losing the first person in every single fight, so... It's going to be a battle of attrition that they absolutely have to win if they want to stay in this map. Yeah, they do, and they have to take down this wall and teleport in. This is the desperation teleport here. It'll actually end up going short, so they're actually going to be teleported into the sand pit right into a dragon here. So they do catch them with the flux, but it looks like all of the kills are going to go the way here of the storybook villains. All it's a matter of cleanup now. Sharpshot getting two. He's going to clean up the point. Shinky goes down, and that is going to do it, folks, as it is going to be the storybook villains who make it look easy there on Hanamura with a very, very quick time and a full hold here on point A. Very clean from that one, especially that looks like a map that storybook villains have played a lot, have practiced, yeah. have some sort of idea of what to do, especially compared to how Ilios panned out. They came in here, they just came out with so much aggression. They came out with what a lot of people probably would refer to as a symmetric trees, but like, <laughs> it's a valid strat now. You have to account for it. I, it's like one of those things that sucks when you fall for it and you're the defending team and they just sim rush you. Mm-hmm. But it's it's something that's there now, and you just have to kind of realize it and revisit your strategies for that map. So we're at halftime here, 2-0, 2-0 for both of these sides, as uh, they look like uh, Otter Oxide uh, doing really well there on Elios, though it was closer than that 2-0 standpoint there. But Storybook Villains coming back with a vengeance there on Hanamura, a very even match here between the two teams. Uh, so it looks like we're going to go take a little bit of a break here. Uh, so we'll be back here in a couple minutes, uh, and we will resume this preseason match here between Otter Oxide and Storybook Villains. Next map up is going to be King's Row, folks. Folks, followed by Havana. Everything to play for in the next two maps here between Otter Oxide and Storybook Bones. So stay tuned.
敵を喰らう Alrighty, folks, we're back, and we're going to be heading into King's Row here in just a second. Tied up at one here in the preseason. This is just your announcement. The Owlet Season one, uh, Owlet Season 3 start date is going to be Sunday, September 8th. For those who are watching at home, just wanted to make sure that everybody realizes that these are preseason games. Everybody just working out the kinks. The roster locks will actually go into play here tomorrow, 9-4. Uh, so... We'll get final rosters and we'll have updated graphics for all of the teams here once all the roster locks goes in for that. Really? Now, we're going into King's Row here. Tied at ones here between Storybook Villains and Otter Oxide. It looks like it will be Otter Oxide here going on the offense first here. Pulse on to King's Row. And um, they had a tough time here on Hanamura, but this is an all different beast altogether. Yeah, this on Hanamura, they really look like they fell victim to 
a semi semi cheese strat. I'll use semi because I don't consider it cheese, but it is a relatively new teleporter strat with Symmetra, <laughs> and they just never recovered from it throughout the entire match. Probably a little bit of tilt, a little bit of how do we break this? But it was a very impressive defense from the side of uh, Storybook Villains, especially once they got an alt advantage, they never lost it. They were very good at just relying on picks the whole time. So now we see Otter Oxide coming out with double shield, which is what they've been running the whole time, and they are opting to run this Symmetra Hanzo again. Oh, and America Kuyu actually gets taken out by Brutal One right away. Icicle to the dome takes out the Symmetra there right away. So it's going to stall them up a little bit here. They've got to be super careful as uh, it is going to be uh, picks galore here. Storybook Villains being very, very good at making sure they get that initial kill and just messing with the rhythm here of the offensive team. Mm -hmm. And they get Maywalled off, so that's going to cause the team to separate a little bit. It wasn't a perfect Maywall, so they get through. And now they're in position around the statue, and they're teleporting high ground. Yeah, they're going to teleport high ground. They move a lot of their players up above, but it looks like the tanks have fallen down already. Just trying to make sure Brutal One actually will take down the Immortality Field, but positioning here is with Otter Oxide as they are trying to just push through and make sure. Viper here being very aggressive. Amerikuyu again getting killed uh, as uh, not going to be able to participate and melt people down. It looks like a Moira, uh, Moira ult here will push back the remaining members of the team, and now it has all been storybook villains they're going to be pushing back the members of honor oxide here they're going to have to think about this push again 248 here on the clock as uh, they're going to try king's row offense point a again here shinki also dropped that that amplification matrix mm -hmm. which isn't a huge loss because you are playing that piece into a bunker and you'll likely have it again within the next minute or so but it is a loss in the alt bank that was really the only thing they had to push on now they're gonna have to slowly make their way through here again dealing with the maywall all the spam from from sharp shots hanzo and just in general having to be way more careful than they want to be yeah and they're gonna they found a better route here to get to that high ground and now all six of them are onto the high ground here and are going to be able to sort of rain death here onto the members of uh, the Storybook Villains. Ooh, a great mini grab here. We'll push everybody back and move away from the shield. But a dragon right into the hallway there. The Immortality Field will stop any real damage from actually occurring as it looks like the members here of Storybook Villains just going to try to spread out a little bit. And as you say that, here comes the window from the Baptiste. He got that up. Baf, Siaguli able to get Bowl of Bowl. So this could be the beginning of the end here for Storybook Villains losing their main tank is going to make sure that Yellow Chella and team are going to come in, but ooh, a big flux here onto the point, but another uh, Immortality Field will prevent any serious damage from occurring, but a freeze comes out with no Immortality Field is going to stop that, and that's going to be a shooting gallery, folks, as all six of them got caught. Way to not panic on the side of the storybook villains. They caught everyone. They do lose about almost two ticks, not quite, so it's only going to be a one tick of permanent progress here on point A. But that transcendence from Shinki or from Jumpy Wizard came out very early, especially since they had the immortality field on the ground. Mm -hmm. No one would have died anyway to that uh, gravitic flux. And because they had to blow the transcendence so early, that we saw Brutal One get a free May Blizzard out on six people, just winning the fight single handedly. They're going to have to rely on some combination of Grav Dragon, the mini grab with the Orisa and the Dragon from Seo Guli, to even win this fight because they want to do it very cleanly and get this cart rolling ASAP. Yeah, and there it is. There's the mini grab and the dragon. As you said, that's forcing everybody into the back area as they will hide underneath the uh, underneath the archway. Sharp, sharp shot, though, getting another big kill. Gets Jumpy Wizard there. As it, here comes another Flux here. Will catch the members, but that Moira ult will, yeah, will make sure that everybody's up, but double support alts here going to be blown by the side of the storybook villains as they're just going to hide up on the high ground make sure but they've lost two they've lost Sinchi, uh, Sinki, Shinki and Siaguli with 15 seconds left to go very very tough going here for uh, Otter Oxide up onto the high ground as it looks like they're going to be trying to see if they can just drop onto the point here very very last second with our two remaining members going to be coming from the other side in a loco they're able to take Viper right away they're going to be able to start overtime but they're going to be down two at this point make that three make that four as it is going to be huge here for the storybook villains they started off slow here on Helios, but they are imposing their will as it is going to be a hold here on point a on our oxide only getting just under about 66 percent just about 65 64 percent there so it's 61.5 yeah 61.5 yeah. on the capture progress so less than two ticks that they're gonna need a very impressive hold to, to stay in Kings for at all.
Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's something they can do right now because right now the defense from the side of Storybook Villains has looked incredibly solid. Just the single-handed, like, all of the staggers coming out from the side of um, Sharp Shots, Hanzo, just mm -hmm. always starting the fight with a pick, always making sure that they can't fight as six, has been huge. And they've lost well over two of their minutes just trying to regroup, trying to figure out how to get a foothold in without losing someone. Which means that you're trying to figure out how to attack a point with two minutes on the clock, like two real minutes of attack, which is nearly impossible in Overwatch. Yeah. So now they're going to be put back into another precarious situation, very similar um, to what is uh, happening in Hanamura. They got shut down on their point A push, but instead there, uh, it looks like your storybook villains will need it, uh, just under two ticks here to make sure that they go through. What are some strategies here that storybook villains can practice with? It is the preseason here, so nobody wants to reveal too many strategies what's going on right now. But with such an ad advantage that the villains have, is this the time to experiment with types of pushes that you would want on up onto point A? I don't know if experiment's the right word, but it is definitely one of those ones where if you know you're running double shield, do it the proper way. Do it the way you see in Overwatch League where you have where you get control of the high ground, you have your Sigma sort of poking them in the back of the head with his own shield, because Sigma can sort of play as a flanker flanker tank right now, where you have your Arista main shield, your Sigma can sort of go around, just pressure from a side, force them off point. And all you really need to do is force them off point for long enough and you win by accident. Yeah, and here he comes. They're actually going to push this very, very hard. Immortality Field will come up here onto the side of the defense as they're going to try to see them up. Bowl of Bowls here being very, very aggressive and good use there of the mini grab. Brutal One is able to take down a Marikuyu, and now it's just a matter of can they finish people off? They get two more kills as they're just going to be powering on through, and that is going to be that, folks. It will be the Storybook Villains who are going to capture King's Row here, one to zero. Very quick take. Just. Brutal one going completely ham on Doomfist, going all the way in, forcing off all cooldowns, forcing them off the point, and just getting kills after Play after it. forcing everyone off, just punching their shields. Yeah. <laughs> that is one of the reasons why Doomfist is so popular now, is because you can just go through shields. Shields don't stop punches like they stop uh, Brig shield bashes. But you know when you consistently are getting ahead in alt economy like Storybook Villains is? Otter Oxide is just not really accounting for it and playing into it for pretty much every push because both Hanamar and King's Rose start off with just a bunch of picks from the side of Storybook Villains, staggering them, buying themselves time to get that alt chart before Otter Oxide can. And once Otter Oxide has been playing into this alt bank of three more alts than what they have, they're like, okay, we'll win this fight. They go in, they fully commit, blow the one or two alts they have, and Storybook Villains has two that they can blow freely without even having to worry about it because they just have a so much bigger alt bank and that's just been happening every single push so far yeah and, and it's been very very problematic here for otter oxide we uh looks like here we're gonna have that fixed all right so yep Havana is going to be the next map here for uh, this match between our Oxide and Storybook Villains. It looks like they're going to be able to need a quick pause here. Uh, something going on into the background. So we're going to come back uh, and we're going to see what happens at the conclusion of this match. Havana will decide will Storybook Villains walk away with a 3-1 victory here or will Otter Oxide tie up this match and force us to go into the control tiebreaker Lee Jong Tower. Stay tuned.
what have, happened? We've been muted the entire time. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, great. Fantastic. Yep, that'll do it. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. Hope you enjoyed our presentation of the Owlet Tournament. So thank you so much. Have a good evening. We're